Hey there, folks. This is the first lesson in a series on ear training for banjo players, which basically just means trying to figure things out by ear. Hearing something, finding it on your instrument, which is something I get asked about all the time. And for good reason. It's probably the most important skill you can have as a musician. Now, there are a lot of really good reasons to develop your ear. You can use it to learn melodies, to learn the chords of a song, transcribe a player who's playing you really enjoy. It's invaluable in improvisation. The list is endless. It's the universal musical skill. But we have to start somewhere really simple. So depending on your level of experience, this might be pretty easy or it might be totally new and a big challenge. Either way, don't skip any of these steps. Just make sure you're comfortable with them and always practicing them. There isn't really a level at which you're done learning this stuff. It just gets easier and easier. You hear things faster and faster, and it becomes more intuitive on the instrument. So with all that said, we're going to start off with just listening to one note and then trying to figure out where that is on the instrument. Now, even that can get really complicated because there's a lot of different frets. There's a lot of notes. So if I just pick any random note, you have a lot of different options to choose from. So we have to even be more simple than that, even within this simple category. So what if we started with just choosing between two notes? What if one of our options was the first string, D, and one was the second string, B? What if those were your only two options? And if I play one of them, do you think you could figure it out? Now at first, just think logically. I told you that the only two notes are either the first string or the second string, D or B. So if you listen to both of those, and then you try playing both of them, one's going to sound right and one's going to sound wrong, hopefully. So if I play it again, then you play both of those notes, the first string and the second string, then you could probably tell me which of those two it was. Now, hopefully you were able to figure that out. If not, you can just keep listening over and over again, and you'll figure out that it was in fact the B string, the second string. And that's that's playing by ear. That's learning something by ear. That's all it is. Of course, in the real world, we're trying to figure out other things. There are plenty of combinations of notes and they're in different octaves, all that. It does get more complicated, but that literally is the entire process. And the more experience you have, the more it feels like you're just choosing between a couple notes. By the way, for what it's worth with this initial lesson, it's not super important that you know the names of the notes or even that much music theory in general. Eventually, it'll become much more important or at least more helpful. But for this specific lesson, even if you don't know what the names of the notes are that you're playing, it's more about hearing them and finding them. In the future, it's going to be really important to know those things. But don't worry about that for right now. I do have a music theory series that you can check out. There'll be a link in the description where you can get up to speed on all of that stuff. But for now, we're really just training these really basic skills skills. So if you hear me talk about different frets or different note names and things that are confusing, as long as you're playing the right note, that's all that matters for right now. So then let's make this just a little bit more complicated, but not by much. What if you had to choose between only open strings, but it could be any open string. So it could be the first string, D, second string, B, third string, G, fourth string, D, or fifth string, G. That's way more notes, but it's still only five notes. So if I choose one of those, you still only have to try five notes before you figure out which one it is. Now, maybe you can just hear it and you just know immediately, but even if you don't, you can try playing the notes and see which one matches up. So if I choose this note, listen one more time. Then you can either guess or just play through all five of those strings, and hopefully you'll notice that that was in fact G, the third string. Let's try another one. Still, only open strings. And I'll just play one and then try all five of them and see which one sounds right. So after listening to that and trying all the different options, hopefully you figured out that that was the fifth string, also G, but in a different octave. Now let's try one more. How about this? So hopefully you figured out that that was the fourth string, D, but even if you didn't, that's totally fine. This can be really challenging, so don't put too many expectations on yourself to figure it out all at once. And on top of that, there's a couple things we can do to make this a little bit easier, or at least connect a little bit more with the note that we're hearing. One of the things we can do is try to sing the note that we're hearing. Now, let me be clear, I'm not really much of a singer myself. It's not something I really spend any time doing, except when I'm trying to figure something out by ear. There's something that happens when you sing the note that you're trying to figure out that makes it that much more clear in your mind. And if it's really clear in your mind, then when you sing it, 
and then you play it on the instrument, it'll be a lot easier to tell that it's the same note. So it's one thing to hear the note and then try to reproduce it, but it's another thing to actually produce the note yourself with your voice and then make that noise on the instrument. So for instance, if I were to play this note D again, the best way to internalize that would be to sing or to hum it. So you can either say la or D or you can hum whatever it is. La, D, mm, whatever it is, if I really know that, if I really hear it, then I can reproduce it with my voice, then it's a lot easier to hear what it's supposed to be when I'm searching around on the instrument for it. So from this point forward, the best thing you can do for your ear is to sing anything that you're trying to play. This could be one note, it could be a melody, it could be anything. If you can sing it, you will be able to find it on your instrument. The one caveat with this is that vocal control can be really difficult. Some people can just pick out a tune and sing it and it's totally fine. Some people don't have a lot of control over their voice and this can be really challenging. So. I don't want you to feel like this is something you're supposed to be able to do already. This might require practice of its own. And myself not being a singer, certainly not a vocal teacher, I don't necessarily have a ton of good tips for you, but a good basic place to start is kind of what we're already doing, to play a note and just try to sing it. It's kind of the same thing in reverse. You're not trying to find the note necessarily on the instrument, you're just trying to really hear the note clearly. So depending on your range, maybe it's an octave above or below, whatever it is, playing a note, and then trying to sing it, la, is gonna help you develop that control. Especially if you play a different note, try to sing that, la. It's not necessarily gonna be easy, but this is the key to developing an ear in music. So to me, that's level one of this lesson. You're picking from a relatively small collection of notes and you're familiar with all of them, so it shouldn't be too difficult and hopefully you can sing all of them. But how do you practice level one? Well, this is a great thing to do with a friend or if you own a piano or you find a piano app or something like that where you can randomly generate notes that you can figure out, great. But if you're interested on Patreon, I'm putting up files which are basically practice tracks that play random notes which you then have to figure out. So for level one, it would be choosing just from these open strings like we did. And there'll be a couple tracks for each one so you can go through them and figure out different orders of all of these notes. So that's level one for this lesson. Level two gets a little bit more complicated because it's going to be between D on the fourth string and D on the first string, and it's gonna be every note in between. So we have a much bigger group of notes to choose from, but we at least know that they're just between that octave. We don't have to deal with things all the way up here. It's still a relatively small group of notes compared to what we could be looking at. So what that means is that I could choose any one of those notes and you'd have to figure it out and it won't just be the open strings, it's actually gonna include fretted notes. So just as a test, let's try this note. So hopefully you had a chance to listen, maybe you paused the video, maybe you rewinded a couple times and had a couple listens, but either way, hopefully you came to the conclusion that we're talking about A, which I'm playing on the second fret of the third string, but you could also play it on the fourth string on the seventh fret. Same note in two different locations. And in fact, you can play A all over the place, but in that specific octave, those are the two places you could play it. And that's what kind of makes this exercise interesting is that in this case, you could play these in a couple different places, which means you could do all of these notes on one string. So any note that I play in this section will fit on the fourth string between open D and the 12th fret D, or it'll fit somewhere in between lower down on the other strings as well. So anytime you're looking at any of these exercises or if you're on Patreon listening to those audio files, then all of those for level two will work either on the fourth string or on the first couple frets of all the strings. But we'll try one more for level two. It'll sound like this. So hopefully you paused the video, had a couple listens, whatever it took, and now you figured out that that was C sharp which I'm playing on the second fret of the second string. But you could also play in the sixth fret of the third string or on the 11th fret of the fourth string. And it's probably a good idea to find all of those in each place. I wouldn't necessarily go crazy if that's becoming frustrating or kind of deflecting from the point of the ear training, but it's certainly an option. And this is definitely more challenging than level one. It's not that many notes, but it's definitely more notes than level one was, but it's still just a process of elimination. 
It all works so far on the fourth string between the open note and the 12th fret. So if you just try each of those notes, one of them is bound to be the correct one. It might be taking longer than you'd like for it to to figure out this note, or maybe you haven't figured it out at all. But the more you do it, the easier it gets, I promise. If you practice it, then one day you're gonna surprise yourself and it's gonna be a lot easier than you thought it was. But again, that all comes with practice. So you can do that with a friend or you can hop on Patreon. There'll be audio files specifically for that level, just that one octave between the fourth string and the first string string. And if that's comfortable for you, then we can move on to level three. And that's just adding the next octave, which ends up being from D on the fourth string to D on the 12th fret on the first string, which actually means now we just have the full 12 frets on all the strings. And that might seem daunting. We're dealing with a way bigger group of notes at this point, but it's actually just the same notes in different octaves. They're still just D to D and it just goes all the way up to D again, but it's still the same 12 notes. In fact, everything you ever learn by ear will still pretty much be the same 12 notes. But I know that doesn't necessarily just make this easy from the get-go, so let's do some practicing. I'm gonna pick one note, which is gonna be anywhere on these first 12 frets, and it's gonna be your responsibility to find it. So if I play this note, Okay, so there are a couple different places you could have played this one, but I was playing it on the fourth fret on the third string, B. At this point, I'm not that concerned about you finding exactly the right place where I played the note. That's not really the point, but you can definitely do that. Or you can just try to play it in all the different places, like on the second string, on the fourth fret of the third string, or on the ninth fret of the fourth string. All the same note. All right, now let's try another one. Okay, so that one was a lot higher in pitch than the other ones we've looked at, which doesn't necessarily mean it's a lot more difficult, but hearing anything new, anything out of the ordinary can automatically make things more challenging. But hopefully you figured out that that one was a C sharp, which I was playing on the 11th fret on the first string, but you could also play on the 14th fret of the B string, the second string, or on the 18th fret of the G string, the third string, but it doesn't really matter as long as you got that note. And practicing this is just the same. You can do it on your own with a friend, and then there's a specific audio file on Patreon for this level, for just the first 12 frets. And unsurprisingly, if you're comfortable with that, then we can move on to what I guess is level four, which is just the entire fretboard and it encompasses almost three octaves. And I actually don't think it's more difficult to hear the notes when they're in different octaves like this. I think it's more that when we look at the entire fretboard, it can get really overwhelming. There's too many options. But as long as we really listen clearly, try to sing the note, even if we can't sing it in the same octave, and then find it, it's really the same process. So if we're gonna do that, then I'll pick a note somewhere, anywhere on the fretboard, and then you have to find it. So let's try this one. So hopefully you're able to figure out that that is the note G, which I was playing the 17th fret on the first string. But you could also play in the 20th fret on the second string. Now, one of the challenges of this is that when you get up higher in the neck or lower, depending on your vocal range, you might not be able to sing the correct note in the correct octave. For instance, when I play this note G, I can't sing it all the way up there. I have to go sing it lower. La. It's the same note in a different octave, but you're just gonna have to get comfortable with the fact that it's the correct note, but you need to find it in the right place. So as long as you can hear the difference between those two things, you'll be fine. Anyway, let's try another one. I'll play any note anywhere on the fretboard and you'll figure it out. Okay, so that was E, which you could play either on ninth fret of the third string, where I played it, or on the second fret of the first string, or on the fifth fret of the second string, or on the 14th fret of the fourth string. So there's a lot of places you could play that one. It doesn't really matter, but it was E. And so what's cool about this is now we're dealing with the entire fretboard. That's about as far as you can take that concept of learning just one note and finding it on the instrument. Of course, you can still do that with a friend. You can check out Patreon where there are audio files specifically for that with any note being a possibility. But another way of looking at this is that you could go out and listen to any other piece of music and just pick one note you wanna learn. Could be anything 
and you now have the tools to find it. You might not have the experience, you might not have developed those skills, but you have a pathway. You start really simple and it gets more complicated and then you can deal with it. But let's also be conscious of the fact that we're still just talking about one note. That's not really accounting for learning melodies or learning chords or learning where somebody played something on the instrument. All of those things require other skills. But before you develop those skills, you're gonna to wanna to develop this skill, getting really clear about what a note sounds like and how to find it on your instrument. It's definitely not a race. It happens at whatever pace it happens at, but as long as you work at it, it will get easier. The only way that it's not gonna get easier is if you don't do it, and that's a guarantee. So you might as well try and get a little bit better if you can. Anyway, make sure you check out Patreon for audio files of all of these levels, a great way to practice all of this stuff. Otherwise, make sure you just subscribe to this channel, like this video, all that stuff. But that's gonna do it for this video. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye.